It is unusual for me to record this late and I just have decided that coffee is the answer. I went to decaf coffee for a moment. I know no one cares, but I don't care. <laughs> you don't care. Now we're just full on back on pure black coffee at 7.30 p.m. And then I will tell you, oh my gosh, I go to bed so late. I don't know what is the issue. It's really a mystery. Anyways, today we're gonna talk about Hoyas that don't like you for no reason. And there are a lot of growers out there that find these Hoyas a bit challenging. And some of them are only challenging for me. Some of them, no one talks about. They have bad habits and no one talks about that. And I feel I need to. We're just gonna have a nice positive conversation. <laughs> Very positive. I'm just like the most optimistic person ever that walked on planet Earth. I really sometimes don't know how I do it. What was that accent? I really don't want to scare you. I don't like when people talk about plants that are very difficult, when they complain how something is difficult, because then it gets to my head and I, you know, I avoid buying a plant because I hear that it's difficult. And don't listen to anything here. You can buy all of these plants and you can try them out. I'm just kind of giving you a word of caution for some of these. Not all of these are actually really that difficult. Some are just a bit more of a challenge. But take all of this with a pinch of salt. If you want to try them out, don't let anyone scare you into not trying something out. And with that, we can begin. Well, let's start with the first Hoya, that is Hoya undulata. Hoya undulata, I don't think is actually a difficult Hoya. However, she does have some requirements. There are some rules that should not be broken. One of those rules is that you need to keep her warm. She does not like to be cool. She does not really prefer temperatures under 20 degrees of Celsius. So wherever you keep her, make sure that she is warm because if she's not, she will just cause you trouble like no one else. Second rule about Hoya undulata is that her roots are very sensitive, they're slow to intake water, and they're easy to rot. Don't mess with the roots too much. I messed with my roots way too much, and honestly, I should have rerooted my plant a long time ago, and I just did it now because I was kind of waiting for it to flower, which we actually got her to do, so that is great. But my roots have been in bad shape for a long time. They were okay to hydrate the plant, but I just always knew they were not that great. First of all, it shipped for 40 days, to get to me and the roots were okay then they were in cocoa peat i think in perlite when they arrived then i transferred her to i believe a mix that was similar to that but it had some bark in it and then i transferred her to bark and moss that was a mix that i grew in at one point it was a very good mix and she loved that mix she grew a lot of roots but then we had the mealybug root mealybug infestation so i transferred her to laca and i chopped some of the roots but not all because i was still afraid to reroot her and then i transferred her to pond and then I repotted and pond one more time to a self-watering pot because in the pot that she was in, it was not self-watering. I had trouble keeping her watered well enough. So that's a lot of transitions for the root system. And it finally was like, you know what? How dare you? And I agree, how dare I? So I decided to restart her and I'm actually doing it in bark and just a bit of moss. This is one part of the plant. This is the top of the plant. The bottom of the plant I cut in several cuttings, but honestly, there was some rot and I was trying to get rid of all the rot so the cuttings don't look great. She has rooted a bit and I can see that she is activating one of the growth points. So I think we should be okay to let her out of the bag soon. This is what she looks like. Pretty, pretty sun stressed. And that's because obviously she was <laughs> very underwatered. You can see some of those leaves just look very tired, but they're gonna recuperate. She is rooting. Actually, those roots are pretty big considering that she's been rooting only for a week. She's gonna live in self-watering pot from now on, in bark and moss, and we will keep her warm. She always grows in my grow tent. And the third rule about Hoya undulata is she does not like her vine to be touched when she pushes out a vine. Don't do it. I tried to trellis it many, many times, and every time she would die back, almost all the way back to the node from which she started to grow, just let her be. If you can get a big bamboo hoop, let her twine around that. Don't touch the trellis. Don't try to trellis her. Let it be. It's just not a hoya for beginners. I don't really know how I would qualify this. I feel it's a bit too generous if we say the next plant. I honestly feel it's a bit too generous to say even the next being because I'm not really even sure if she's alive and if she's not that might be the best for us. So the next one is Hoya Samananiana. 
I would say she has seen better days, but that's absolutely not true. This plant has been always trouble for me. So that one leaf is gone. You don't even need to look at this. I mean, it's like a stick. It has rooted. I actually started to reroot it. Even though the roots were not bad, she just would not grow. And she had all the best care. She had my grow tent. She, maybe, you know, I missed a couple of waterings, but I was trying not to. And she just is an absolute abomination on this planet when it comes to Hoyas. And I still feel that's a compliment for this thing. I made notes for this video and I wrote, why even bother? Honestly, why even bother? There are so many other plants that are gonna do well. Absolutely not for beginners. I don't know that I've heard anyone having great experience with this plant. And I don't even know if she's gonna live and if she dies now. Well, good riddance. Thank you, universe, for relieving me of this thing. She has nice flowers, though. The next plant I talked about on this channel, and it's someone who is growing. Not gonna give her too many compliments. This is Hoya Medinillifolia, and you can see her. She's so cute. She is actually growing two new branches here. One you're not gonna be able to see, but this one you will and it has grown quite fast. And interestingly, she's gonna grow it this way. So we have just decided that it's completely okay to take up all this space. All of this space will be taken up by her. It is a beautiful Hoya, but definitely not for beginners. And I don't think that anyone will <laughs> disagree with me. She is just very sensitive. She's a thin-leafed Hoya that I would not grow outside of a grow tent or a cabinet. And cabinet, honestly, maybe too small. So really a grow tent. She does not like highlight. She tends to look ugly in highlights. So mine is under no lights really, just on the bottom of the tent, and she looks nice. It's a plant that is difficult to root. It takes a long time for her to root. I grow her in pure pumice. She has not given me many problems for now, but uh, from what I hear, it can just really go south with her really quickly. It's not a lot of positive things. She does look beautiful. I will definitely give her that. It's really a plant that I love. We lost a peduncle recently for no reason. She still has two peduncles, but they did not bud up. This is something that you're not gonna find a lot of photos of in bloom on internet unless they have been uh, taken in Thailand. I know that she has bloomed in cultivation, but not for many people. I'm gonna mention a plant that I had initially a lot of luck with. It grew really well and then mysteriously something happened and she decided that she just will be an absolute B word, C word, F word, A word. Well, did I forget any words? It's Hoya Rinci from Borneo. Hoya Rinci from Borneo once, long time ago, over a year ago, grew really well for me. She was a beautiful plant and then she started to lose the leaves and she would drop the leaf after leaf after leaf. It was a pretty big plant too. And we were left with a base, which has been looking like this for a year now. She has been treated for mites multiple times. The roots are fine. Actually, she was left with no leaves, so she did give me two leaves. It was just the most mysterious thing ever, and I could not figure out why. Before all the leaves fell off, I, I think I took like six or seven cuttings from this plant, and I tried to root them. And remember, I rooted the initial cutting myself, so I know I can root this plant. And none of them rooted. They just dropped the leaves. Only one rooted, which we are left with here. It's absolutely beautiful. And now we have this long vine. She's growing now, and I think this is it. I think this one is going to be okay, but it's not something that I would suggest. And I know that Betsy has struggled with this plant a lot, and you don't see it offered very often either in sale groups, so I just don't know. It's a beautiful plant, but let me tell you something. If you see this on Instagram and someone tells you it's a beautiful and easy plant, I want you to know that there are people on this world, on this planet, who are very lucky. Don't think that you're one of those people, okay? If you go outside without an umbrella and it rains, you're not one of those people. If you're one of those people like me, who always, when I bring an umbrella, doesn't rain, even though the forecast says it will, and when the forecast says it will be sunny and I don't bring an umbrella and it rains, you are not one of the lucky people, okay? And I really need you to accept that. But all that said, I would give it a try if it's not too expensive. Just, you know, don't get your hopes up. I'm just telling you, she can turn on you 
You turned on me for no reason. What was that about? I still don't know. It's been over a year and I have no idea why you dropped all those leaves. And no one that I sent photos to did not. I sent photos to Camilla. I sent photos to Julie Kennedy. No one knew. No one knew why. She was just like, I'm, I'm just gonna do this now. This is my new phase. And I just had to accept that. And maybe you should stop drinking all this coffee. There are two plants I would like to talk about now. They're not here with me. They're growing really... I'm a bit superstitious to tell you that some plant is growing well because every time I do, they just shut up. Something bad happens to that plant. So we have two plants, Hoya Peninsularis and Hoya Lambi. These two plants have been a problem. Not just for me again, for other people. Hoya Lambi has been a problem for many, many people. She's not a plant that I would recommend to most of us. <laughs> she can do well, so it seems. <laughs> but the beginnings have been rough and we are two years in and now it's less rough, but it wasn't pretty there. I think in November of 2021, I got her or October. It hasn't been smooth sailing. It has been well, not even sinking, but you kind of think you're gonna sink, but then you don't. And it's like, what is happening? No one knows. And you ask the captain, it's like, oh, I don't know. So that's what it's been like. I think Affinity Lambi is a much better plan for you to have. It has nicer leaves too. Well. They're not so big or not big at all. Flower is pretty much similar, but that plant actually might be for Bezzy. At least I don't believe it's Affinity Lambi. Hoya Lambi is a plant <laughs> that I tried to grow outside of my tent and outside of my cabinet because it was too big. I, I don't think I had tents at that point when I got her. It just didn't go well. She started to grow and she gave me two leaves. And that was that. And then she tried to grow many times again and she failed. And I think she had a bad case of mites, which I have treated many times, but she just did not want to grow outside of the tent. So I think that high humidity is pretty crucial for this plant. Now she is in the tent and she has grown one or two new leaves and she's giving me two vines, which are twining around stuff in the tent. So I'm not touching it. I love you but I'm not touching it. Because I also heard that with this plant, she does not like to be touched and she likes to go up when she grows. And I'm just gonna let her do what she wants to do. I'm not touching her. And she's actually starting to intertwine with the second plant, which has been pretty problematic for me. And that's Hoya Peninsularis. I don't know what it is about Hoya Peninsularis, but we had issues. I see she's growing new leaves and new vines, so I'm not touching it. I'm not bringing it because Hoya Lambi is twined around Hoya Peninsularis trellis and we're just leaving them together. Both are very beautiful, but I think they're just a bit more challenging than one needs to be challenged, okay? We, <laughs> the times are already challenging. Do we need any more challenges? This next plant is not so challenging, but more nerve wracking. It's called microphylla. I sent a cutting recently to Farah, and I actually don't think it's doing well. Farah, if it is, let me know. She is Hoya with the smallest leaves. She's very cute. My plant has grown quite a bit actually since taking a cutting, but I think it's nerve wracking. I don't think this is potted properly. I think it would do better if I kind of did something to arrange the this. See? Like that's nerve-wracking. I would like to actually probably move this to pure pumice. I don't like growing some of these in pond. I'll think about that because Hoya microphylla is a Hoya that needs a lot of time also to establish. I see some of those roots don't look so great. I just have not been having uh, the most fantastic experience with Pawn. Some of it has been okay, some of it not. So I think I want to move her to pure pumice. Before she starts to grow, she will really need a couple of months to really get herself established. And she doesn't really make a big root system anyways. It is a pretty uncommon and expensive plant, so I just don't feel this is something you should risk with. It's an okay shipper, actually. My plant, when I sent cutting to my friend Farah, I think it was in the mail for two weeks and it was fine. That's something that's kind of good. But overall, it's just a bit of a nerve wracking plant. It is beautiful. It is very special. It is very unique. I just feel you can skip this one if you're just starting out. There are other plants with small leaves that I feel are pretty easy, like Hoya species and S12323. Grow this perhaps instead. Oh, you need to be watered. Oh, so sorry. <sighs> How did I forget to water this? I was watering the other day. But you know, I just would choose this one 
instead. Will you surprise us with the flower is my question. One of these days, we would all like to see what secrets you hold. Reveal them to me. That is a spell on how to get Hoyas to bloom. Heard it here first. There's a big storm coming. <laughs> Okay, well, we have to continue with the video. This is something that we don't talk about. Are we gonna have hail? I think I need to stop recording. I guess we will be back a little bit later because I'm pretty sure that you can hear the banging of the rain against the window. It stopped. Oh, thank you. The last plant is... Okay, we're gonna stop recording. This one is Hoya Carnosa. Argentia. I don't have both of the Argentias. I have Argentia Princess. I had two of these plants. They arrived to me and one of them was for my friend Farah and she finally has it. Thank goodness the curse has left my home. This plant has not done anything in the six or seven months that it's been here, but revert. Revert, revert, revert. Revert, revert, revert. Do you know anything else? Any other party tricks? I feel not. Revert. That's all she knows. And I will cut her pretty soon. What is that? Oh, there is something in there. It's a baby centipede. Why are you there? Go away. Ugh. If you crawl onto me, I'm gonna drop the entire pot. Stop it. This is Hoya Carnosa Argentia Princess. As you can see, some of the leaves on the bottom are variegated and that is the original cutting. She has grown five leaves here, none of which have variegation. They are on two separate vines. One vine gave us two leaves and then it stopped. The other vine gave us two nodes and three leaves and all three silver. I'm just waiting for the next pair of leaves to see if somehow magically the variegation will return because sometimes it will. And if it doesn't, I have to chop that somehow and restart the plant essentially. I have heard that this plant does not like to grow in pond. Some people say that it likes to grow in pond, that it's fine. I see some people with beautiful variegated plants in pond. This is DIY pond, there is no fertilizer in it. I was fertilizing it every week with watering and then I stopped because some people said that she is reverting because of the fertilizer. If you tell me high light or low light, tried both, didn't work. I have withdrawn fertilizer completely didn't work it is still silver i have moved it in the tent out of the tent some people say it does not want high humidity tried that it didn't work it is just a plant that is not very stable and i will cut off the roots because some people say you just need to cut off the roots too and then restart it again in organic mix oh one more thing one more thing one more thing hold on Olha carnosa brazil has pushed out three vines so far this is the third one Three of them were absolutely... I know you're like thunder and all, but I'm recording a video. Be quiet, please. Watch me get struck by lightning. <laughs> Next part of this video. Please, it's just, I don't know, drizzling. She has reverted pretty much straight away. This is her fourth attempt. Some of these plants are gonna be pretty tough. There is no reason why she would revert, but she did. For some people, she grew really well right from the bat, from the same mother plant. And my cutting is just like, <laughs> maybe no, maybe struggle first. How about that? And we are past the struggle, I feel. So it's not a plant that I will, I think, ever propagate, to be quite honest with you. I'm just gonna leave her to grow because I love it. She beautiful. She is amazing. That is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you kind of found it helpful which Hoyas to kind of stay clear of or to be very careful when purchasing. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment down below. I would like to hear what Hoyas you were struggling with. This is always so fun for me to read. Not because I like to, <laughs> I don't like that you're struggling, no. That's not it. It's just like, sometimes you get a confirmation that a plant is not as easy as some people say because some people have more luck with it. On that note, I think it's time to end this video. I'm surprised that electricity is still here because every time it rains, there is like a slightly bigger storm, they cut the power for whatever reason. It's like, hello, 21st century, I have demands. Have a wonderful weekend. I will see you very soon in a new video. And that's that. Now, say goodbye, say goodbye. 
you know, do better and I will say nicer things about you. The light, uh, the lights are going off. That's, that's the end. It's like, shut up. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas. Beth Gibson, Betsy, Catherine Molina, Danube Daniels, Daria Kuminska, Diane Sikorsky, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppenkamp, Hoji Scott, Houseplant Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavan Denot, Kara, Casey Gross, Kelly Cook, Kelso, Kiwi Mochi, Kristen Sherwood, Leplan de Steph, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Mars B, Martina, Leaf Per Day, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Nicole Ferranti, Moa Edmund, Neil Yang, Niha Basso, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Sleep Tropicals, Nita Macy, PJ, Plan Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Robin Roos, Salong Adal, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, Tia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Xenia Green, Youth of the Walamuth, Zardarama, and Zlokob Nifoni. A big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina. Farnan, Anna K, Brenda Little, Brana Phillips, Kilon, Claudia L, Erin Keenan, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Plantolania, Ringlob, and Tang Watana Sria Cool. And thank you to my $1 patrons Kari, Christina Greengrass, Constance, Couture Helvetica, EDW, Emilia Bronson, Joanna Pierce, and Jolie Sullivan, Kayla Vavra, Lauren M, Lauren Ann Subramanian, Luzman Fernandez, Neely Spicer, and Olivia Chin Muller. Thank you all so much for your incredible support in making the channel possible. I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend, and I will see you very soon in the next video.